My name is Sai Smith, and as you've mentioned, I'm a singer, songwriter, um, independent recording artist. Um, when did I first learn that I wanted to sing? I think I always knew that I was a musician. I always knew I was a musician. Um, I studied piano for many years as a child. Um, I don't think I always knew I wanted to sing, but I always knew I wanted to be a performer. And, um, and that's more at the heart of what I do. Um, the singing part kind of was a gift to me later on. It was like, when I realized I could sing, I was like, oh wow, well this will help out. <laughs> then I'm not just on stage, you know, making noises or telling jokes. <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I keep smiling and I keep moving forward because I am really just happy about life. I'm really joyful and, I, and everything that we do, that I do, that we all do is a blessing and I never ever take that for granted and I'm, I'm just thankful. I'm forever thankful. Sometimes things get hard. That's a given. We all have hardships. We all have trials and tribulations. but. The fact that we can get up and face another day is a blessing, and I, and I am thankful for that, always. Take the time. I worked with Mark DeClive Lowe on Fast and Curious. He produced the entire album. This is the first time I've had one producer working on an entire project with me. Um, and it was, it was the perfect melding, in my opinion, because he really helped um, bring the party that was in my head to life. It was like a party in the rainforest on Mars. That's what I was hearing and that's what I was seeing. And Mark's musical ability, his DJ ability, his... Um, his jazz sensibility helped bring forth all of the things that I wanted to put into an up-tempo album. I didn't want it to just be an up-tempo album with two chords, you know what I mean? I wanted it to be something interesting musically, something interesting lyrically, um, and something that really spoke to more than just rhythms and pulses. I wanted it to speak to vibrations. I think there was a moment um, when I, I tried out for a play in DC when I was still living in Washington and um, I didn't hear back from the director. I thought I didn't get the part and I just went on back to work you know, every day on Capitol Hill for the lobbyist I worked for. And then one day I ran into that same director like two months after I auditioned for his play and he said, Oh my goodness, you know, I've been looking for you. I need a lead. For, I'm still looking for a lead for my play. Can you come to California in two weeks? And I, I said on the spot, yes. But in my head, I was thinking, this isn't really going to happen. I'm, he's not sending me to California. This is some bull. But <laughs> lo and behold, two weeks later, a plane ticket came in the mail. I mean, on paper, a plane ticket. I don't even think they do plane. I didn't even, yeah, plane ticket, paper. And when I got that ticket in the mail, that's when I knew. I'm about to move to LA and I'm about to do this and I'm about to stop this working on Capitol Hill because that's not really what I want to do. I'm about to stop this whole plan B stuff because I never even went to my plan A. That plane ticket was the moment, I think, for me. I didn't really have any moments leading up to that uh, because I hadn't really been focusing on making music my career at that point. Um, I think the struggle came later when 
I moved to Los Angeles and I was really shopping myself as a songwriter and not as a recording artist, but everybody thought my songwriting catalog demo was a recording artist demo. And I kept running from that. I'm not a recording artist, I'm not a recording artist. That was the struggle, me running from something that I knew in the back of my head I really was. Um, finally embracing the artistry part of myself um, was, was the win for me, because that's when everything started falling into place. Um, I mean, first and foremost, you have to love yourself from within to be able to love what's on the outside. And I think that um, we, as women, as sisters, we, we need to show that we love our insides by showing that we love all the other sisters around us. You know what I mean? Um, there needs to be more of a, I think, communal spirit and less of some of the cattiness that I see. Um, for the most part, though, I think we know that and I think we do that. We just need to step that love up a little bit. Once you can embrace your inner beauty, I think the outside part is a piece of cake, you know, because, because you start to realize that your body is a temple, you know, your spirit is a temple, and you start to take care of it and, and, and realize that it's beautiful, you know? Well, you know, our relationship um, is, is constant work. You know what I mean? It's perpetual work. You can never sit on your, um, you know, you, you, have to, you have to constantly sow to reap the love from, from whatever relationship you're in. And so I think we're constantly, you know, saying I love you or, you know, I try to make him dinner and when I can or he'll cook breakfast. And, you know, sometimes we just spontaneously dance around the house. Um, it's really about maintaining the love affair you know, that got the whole thing started in the first place um, and actively maintaining that, you know. Um, as silly as it sounds, I try to look nice when I'm around the house. <laughs> it sounds silly, but you know what I mean? I don't mean I put on like a full beat of makeup every day, but you know, I try not to like do like sweatpants and look raggedy when I'm when, on the rare days that I'm home because I want my husband to see me, you know, like looking presentable as much as possible does that like sound like the opposite of feminist maybe but it's not so much that as it is i i take pride in in my presentation and i want him to know that Sometimes in each song, I find a different meaning, and um, and and I just try to be sincere to the meaning that I that I have for that song at that moment. I just try to be present in the show and not somewhere else. And I think when I'm as present as I can be, the audience feels it and they appreciate it. That's all. I just want to continue, you know, 
as an instrument, your voice is always evolving. And I just want to make sure that I am getting all that I can get out of my vocals. Um, as they grow and as the muscle continues to grow, I just want to grow with it, you know? Um, and that goes also with my understanding of life and interpretation of life. I want to make sure that my voice is congruent with my understanding and, and, and um, my, my experience, you know, living. When I look back on my career, um, I want my legacy to be that I was a good wife and a good daughter and someone who spread positivity uh, and love as much as possible um, to everyone. Um, someone who took her craft as seriously as a baby. Um, and just somebody, someone who loved love, if that makes sense. What's up, everybody? This is Cy Smith, and you're watching Out the Box TV. What's up? Just invite and famous. Oh, people love the sun. People love the sun.